the question of whether two women are needed to act as a witness in the place of one man. The source of this misconception is the misunderstanding of the verse of the Quran called the verse of the deaths, verse number 282 of chapter number two, which happens to be the longest verse in the Quran. And therefore, I will only quote the first part of it, which deals with this point. The verse says, you who believe, when you contract a debt for a stated term, put it down in writing. Have a scribe write it down justly between you. No scribe should refuse to write. Let him write as God has taught him. Let the debtor dictate and let him fear God his Lord and not to diminish the debt at all. If the debtor is feeble-minded, weak, or unable to dictate, then let his guardian dictate justly. Call in two men as witnesses. If two men are not there, then call one man and two women out of those you approve as witnesses, so that if one of the two women should forget, the other can remind her. Firstly, I want to mention that this verse gives us the message that Allah loves us. If you are traveling somewhere and somebody packs your bag for you, and you arrive at your hotel and open your suitcase to find that in it is everything you need. Your clothing, deodorant, toothbrush, even a snack in case you get hungry. And this person who packed your suitcase clearly loves you. And likewise, when I see a verse that is so detailed, it is evident that God loves us. Because he even whilst dealing with financial matters, he concerns himself with social relations between people. In this instance, he does so by telling us even which party should dictate to the scribe of the contract that it must be the borrower, not the lender. Because if the lender were dictating, it could cause the debtor to feel belittled, especially when there is a mention of penalties for not paying, etc. Another of the details mentioned is who the witnesses should be and how many there should be. One man is not acceptable. Does it mean that men are not trusted? We have to understand that in some cases, two men are not acceptable as witnesses and there must be four. This doesn't mean that the Sharia does not trust men, but rather it means that the severity and the nature of matter determine the proof needed. The more serious the repercussions, the more proof that is required. This verse is talking specifically about financial dealings. In some cases, men may not be accepted as witnesses at all, while one woman is accepted. These can be extremely serious matters, such as determining who a maternal mother is. In cases when two women claim that they are the mother of one baby, in such a case, only the testimony of a woman is acceptable because a male would never have been a midwife. Another example is the testimony of a woman who claims that she witnessed that two people who are married were both breastfed by the same woman at least five times each. According to Islam, that would make them foster siblings and as such, their marriage would be prohibited. So this is a situation where marriages can potentially be ended and families torn apart, yet only a woman's testimony can be accepted. Since it is not reasonable to assume that any male were present watching a woman breastfeed on many separate occasions. Financial contracts deal with numbers, dates, installments, and amounts of each installment, and many other detailed complicated factors. Although the Quran is not suggesting that women are deficient in dealing with such matters, it is possible that whilst a woman is experiencing PMS, her premenstrual syndrome, her ability to focus and her ability to remember can be affected. If you go to Google Scholar and type in the words PMS, and memory, you will find numerous articles all dealing with the effects of premenstrual syndrome on female memory. I know that radical feminists will not like what I'm saying here, but we are talking about science now. When they see that men are discredited, 
in certain cases as witnesses when it was unjust to accept their testimony, then they should accept that the coin has two sides. The verse does not discredit women in this case, nor does it even say that two female witnesses are needed in the stead of one male. Rather, it says that the female witness should have a female companion with her in order to remind her if she were to err. Interestingly, we find that in Canada, Australia, and the UK, there have been several court cases where female perpetrators have had their sentences reduced when their lawyers were able to prove that the women were suffering from PMS at the time they committed crimes. So it is not only Sharia law that acknowledges this physiological condition in order to uphold justice.